Next, we're going to take a look at the Schrodinger equation with the potential energy equals to zero everywhere. What we call this the free particle. So with the potential energy zero everywhere, the Schrodinger equation reads minus h bar squared divided by 2m times the second derivative of psi over dx squared equals e times psi back. But before we carry on, let's define the new variable k, and let's define k as the square root of 2me divided by h bar. With this in mind, let's call this equation number 1. Equation number 1 becomes equation number 2, which is d psi, the second derivative of psi, with respect to x, equals minus k squared times psi back. Equation number two is the old goody uh, wave equation, and we know the solution for this guy. The solution is psi of x equals some constant a times e to the i k times x plus some constant b times e to the minus i k times x. So this is the solution for the for equation number two. And if we want to find the time-dependent solution, then we're just going to invoke the time solution with it. So psi of x and t is equal to a times e to the i k times x minus h bar k over 2m times time plus some constant b times e to the minus i times k times x plus h bar k over 2m times time. Let's call this equation number 3. So looking at this equation, look at this part of this equation, the, exp the exponent part. We can see something from this part. What do we see? Something in the form of uh, x plus or minus some constant times time. If, if this, just using dimensional analysis, we notice that nu, this constant, must be the velocity. And if we, if we are going to take a look at the wave of equation number 3, this equation right here it's just this wave going up and down like that for instance right and it's moving at this direction for example okay so at any at any moment in time if you look at any point here let's say this one or this one the, vo the velocity of the wave gonna be constant so in other words x plus nu t must equal to constant right so with this with this being said i'm gonna redefine my variable k to take uh, plus or minus values plus or minus square root because it's the same thing right 2m e divided by h bar so with this here, we're going to rewrite equation number 3 as psi sub k of x and t equals a times e to the i times k oops times k times x minus k h bar square divided by 2m times t so now if k is positive this means the wave the wave packet or the uh, the wave profile if you wish is moving to the right 
if k is negative then the wave back is moving to the left right okay so with this being said now we can uh, we can do a few things but before we do this let's review some of the stuff from physics one let's review the, wa the wave function uh, I mean the the wavelength lambda the wavelength lambda is given by 2 pi divided by the absolute value of k right because we know the momentum is equal to h bar times k all right so if we know the momentum is equal to that we know the vol the the, vol the velocity is nothing but h bar divided by absolute value of k divided by 2m let's call it something else let's call it nu sub q for quantum so this is the quantum velocity with few with a little bit of algebra this is equal to square root of e divided by 2m what we also know that the energy is equal to one half mass times velocity square this is the kinetic energy right so solving for velocity we get v i mean nu equals to square root of 2e divided by m Let's call this new sub C for classical. If you look at the at the relation between the classical velocity and the quantum velocity, the classical velocity is twice as fast as the quantum velocity. Which is to say that the particle is moving twice faster than the wave. This this is what this thing means, which is a problem. This is like a paradox. We need to fix that. But before we fix this, we're going to come back to this. There's a bigger problem. And the other problem is equation number 4 is not normalized. So, let's go ahead and try to normalize equation number 4 by taking the integral from negative infinity to infinity of psi sub k star times psi sub k dk, dx I mean. So we have the normalization constant times itself times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of dx which is just one I mean which is infinity this gives us that a square times infinity must be equal to 1 which is wrong it cannot be equal to 1 because we have this infinity so the second problem, which is bigger than the first one, this is the first problem here. The second problem, that the wave function is not normalized. So what we should do about that? There's something called Fourier trick, or a Fourier transform. We induce a function that's, that forces our original function to be normalized. And this can be proven. So we're going to induce a new constant, 1 over square root of 2 pi, because why not, right? Times the integral from negative infinity to infinity, okay? Times phi of k, this is the con this is the function here. Phi of k is the Fourier transform of psi of x and t, times e to the i times k x minus h bar k square divided by 2m times t dk so with this being said we need to define this new function this new function is phi of k is equal to 1 divided by square root of 2 pi this constant here comes from Fourier transform then from negative infinity to infinity of the wave function psi of x and 0 times e to the 
minus i k times x dx. With this being said, let me just write in a box here really fast that if you have a function f of x and this function is equal to 1 divided by square root of 2 pi times the integral from negative infinity to infinity times some function f big f of k times e to the i k x dx you can interchange this function with this function f of k is going to be equal to 1 divided by square root of 2 pi times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x times e to the minus i notice this minus has to be here k x dx so f of x is the Fourier transform of f of k this thing what this thing means so this equation equation number five and this equation equation number six so the solution for the Schrodinger equation for the free particle the simplest case of all is given by equation number five with phi of k being equation number six. There you have it.